I'm Lindsay Smith with Real Agriculture. I'm joined now by Eric Bowman. He's with Jersey, Ontario, and we are at the Ottawa Valley Farm Show, and I've caught up with Eric just after his talk on heat stress. Uh, Eric, maybe you could just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about the work that uh, you're doing on your PhD. Um, so I'm a student at Université Laval in Quebec City. I research odd and branch chain uh, milk fatty acids. So these are specific fatty acids that are synthesized by microbes in the rumen of the cow as they m- break down the feed. Um, and then uh, amulytic bacteria break down starch and cellulitic bacteria break down um, cellulose. And these two groups of microbes synthesize different um, groups of odd and branch chain fatty acids. And so in the milk, if we look at how those groups of odd and branch chain fatty acids change, hopefully we're able to understand what the changes are happening to those uh, populations of bacteria in the rumen. It's a long way to say that we really like microbes because that's how we get milk and meat, right? Yes. (laughs) Okay. Now, let's focus on someone did sort of make fun of me today for wanting to talk to you about heat stress in dairy cattle because it's March and it's quite nice out because it's quite cool. But obviously, we need to prepare for the summer months and for heat stress. So first, walk me through what we know about how heat stress impacts dairy cattle. Um, So... Dairy cows in North America um, ex- undergo or suffer from heat stress for about 10% of a calendar year. So you're looking at about 40 days where it gets to a range where they're uncomfortable and there's 365 days in a year. So um, what this does is that as cows get uncomfortably warm, their intake goes down. So they're not eating as much. This changes how much energy is available to them for things like production, um, fertility, um, and so any decreases in production or fertility directly impact the bottom line of any farm. And uh, then furthermore, um, as the cow undergoes heat stress and she starts breathing faster, for example, or her heart rate goes up, you just know that she's uncomfortable. And so then there's a welfare aspect to that as well. So tell me a bit, though. So it, it is a, sh- a small part of the year, but how big of an impact can that have? Because it, it, as you said, it impacts fertility as well. So... Like, are we talking that realistically it's it's a much longer impact than just that 10%? Yeah, so um, if a cow is undergoing heat stress for about 40% of the year, for example, and some studies show that uh, heat stress won't have an effect today, but it'll have an effect a few days from now, um, and temperature varies a little bit. So um, let's say those 40 days are spread out over a period of 80 days and there's always a two-day lag. You might be looking at um, you know, as much as three months of the year where, where cows aren't producing optimally because of heat stress. And so um, you know, on one side there's um, pr- abatement practices uh, and then on the other side um, one of the things that I looked at specifically are breed effects and how that might um, help a farmer to deal with um, heat stress and make sure that his cows are working as well as they could be. Okay, so I sort of look at it, because I also like plants, that we we know that we can do things to manage our crop uh, from pests and certain things like that, but we also choose genetic um, differences to potentially fight off different diseases, whatever. So are you telling me that b- within cattle, there's a genetic difference on how they manage heat stress? Well, yeah, for sure. So... Um one big driver of, of heat stress and the effect that it has is, is body size. So larger cows um, have a higher mass to surface area ratio. Um, and then the higher that mass to surface area ratio gets, the harder it is for that cow to, to get rid of heat, right? So if you think of a tennis ball versus a soccer ball, well, the volume inside of a tennis ball versus its volume Um, is a lot larger and so if that tennis ball got really hot it would cool down a lot faster too because it's a lot more surface area to move that heat out and so that's basically what happens with with cows so if you have a really really big Holstein cow versus a a small Holstein cow or an Ayrshire or a Jersey cow or at the other end of the spectrum would be a goat uh, those animals will be much uh, have a much different capability to deal with heat stress. So from a practical point of view, walk us through some of the management things you can do, but obviously even just recognizing size having that much of an impact, um, how, what can farmers do to minimize the impact of heat stress on their cattle? Um, well, from a practical standpoint, um, you know, changing your genetics takes time. 
um, changing breed takes money often if you have to uh, either start breeding differently or buying different cows. Um, and so the, the quickest ways to start dealing with it are to look at your housing system. So make sure that, you know, there's sufficient shade structure if you're a pasture-based system in the summer. Um, for us here in, in, in Ontario or Canada, obviously not many farms are going to be pasture-based because it's pretty hard to find a green pasture in the winter. Um, so in the summer, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough air flowing through your barn. Um, so you like if your cows are spend a lot of time sleeping and they spend a lot of time at the feed bunk. And so make sure that they have fans there if it's really hot, uh, cooling through uh, sprinkler systems would be good. And and uh, some practical ways to measure that or easy ways to measure that are, are to go and stand in a stall where the cow lays down and stand there for five minutes. And are, are you sweating or are you relatively comfortable? Or if it gets to the fall, are you too cold? You can start need to turn that fan speed down sooner rather than later. And the same thing at the feed bunk, you know, go and stand at the feed bunk and see what it feels like. Um, if it's too hot in there and there's no air movement at your feed bunk, well, cow's not going to want to go over and eat very much, and that's going to, you know, hit your tank pretty hard. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you.